of our business. Uh, Lee, I'll turn it over to you to introduce your panel. Sure. Thank you. Helps if I bring the questions along. Um, so we have a, a great panel this morning um, representing sort of all three sides of the, uh, the world. Um, we've got the seller uh, here, we've got the agency here, and on the far side, we've got the marketer. Um, Adam Gerber is um, currently at ABC. He's uh, Vice President of Sales Development and Marketing, uh, has been very involved in the advanced television space and emerging media for a very long time in various different capacities. Filling in for uh, Mike Bologna today is Jeff Minsky. Jeff Minsky's at OMD, where he's director of emerging media. Mike got stranded in Ohio last night on a plane that I guess had an electrical fire. Right. And then on the far side is uh, Gene Hanrahan. Gene Hanrahan is um, senior director of media at Mattel. Mattel has really been one of those companies that's been at the forefront of advanced TV, interactive television. So between the three of them, I think we have some very different interesting perspectives on um, where things are going. Uh, there's really three areas that we're going to try to cover this morning. Um, first one is how do we value online video and video exposure through other platforms? Uh, and then we're going to get into two of the biggest challenges that we face. Number one, one that was touched on in the previous panel, the whole issue of measurement um, and how are we going to uh, deal with that. And then finally, the issue of complexity. Right now, there's a lot of interesting things happening out there, but it's so complex that um, maybe we need to look at ways to simplify it. So we'll touch on each of those throughout, and then uh, towards the end, we'll open it up to your questions. Um, so I'd love to start with, I guess, uh, since Adam's right here on my right, let's talk about how you guys at ABC are valuing the exposure of advertising messages across different platforms. Well, I mean, I, I think first and foremost, the, the thing that we've done, especially over the last couple of years, is to, to rethink our business. And, and ultimately, we're a content business, and our objective is to deliver great content to consumers on whatever screen they choose to watch. And um, especially over the last 12 to 18 months, we've seen rapidly growing viewership on the digital platforms, whether that's on the web, through a browser environment, or um, on phones and tablets through an app environment. And uh, you know, so we view a consistent value to content regardless of what screen a consumer chooses to view. Uh, at the end of the day, they're making a choice to watch a show that they love. And uh, if they happen to do that on a tablet versus a 50-inch plasma, um, that's because they love the show and they happen to have the tablet in their hands and, and not be sitting in their living room. Jeff, what's your perspective? Same you know, perspective, it's an exposure and it is an exposure, or do you well, see it differently? I, I think we see it a little bit differently as it evolves. I, mean, I think we agree that audiences go to content that they love on whatever screen, best screen available and what fits the, their uh, particular moment, uh, frame of mind at the moment. I think what we're learning as we evolve the process of advertising across multiple screens is that there are nuances to the messages that you give and to the way that you give the messages depending on the screen that's being viewed on. And clearly there's, there's you know, the, the first step in the evolution is let's reach the target audience wherever they may be, and that's, that was certainly apropos in the early days of uh, broadband. As we get a little bit more sophisticated, what we are learning is that it's not just about reaching your audiences wherever they are on whatever screen they're at, it's also about reaching them in the, in the correct context. And understanding that the nuance of a lean back experience on a 60, 70 inch TV screen is a very, very different experience, and therefore the consumer is looking for the messaging and the inter engagement to be very different than if you're on a, a phone, a smartphone, or a tablet. So we are, we're getting a little bit more sophisticated and nuanced than that. So if I read between the lines on that, it sounds to me like you're actually saying there might be some video that's worth more than others. Oh, ab absolutely, I think, and that, that's where I think we have a very big challenge. We are to, to paraphrase Bob Garfield a little bit, we are smack dab in the chaos theory. Garfield wrote a book called The Chaos Theory that says just because one uh, system dies doesn't mean another one's ready to take its place immediately. We still live in this very strange, chaotic world of two ad delivery systems. One television, one to many, and then one to one. Now you just heard from the Comcast uh, folks that they are working to roll out an IP system that will enable us to get to that one to one across all screens, but we're not there yet. And so a lot of it, I think what we're gonna talk about today is what do you do in this friction that currently exists where you still have a 
billion dollars of media being spent in a traditional way with GRPs as, as the currency, and yet you have this wonderful world where we can overlay data, where we can take people out who we don't want to ever have our message because we know they'll never buy the product, um, and then we're trying to retrofit it back into a GRP just because that's the currency, that, that, that's, that's the friction that we're currently in. Gene, um, there was a lot of discussion earlier today about um, activation and the importance of having a response mechanism or interactivity. You know, as a marketer, how critical do you see that in, in the portfolio of all the video advertising that you've got in place out there? Well, we actually have, we have two primary targets. One are, are obviously moms, and, and my secondary target is kids. So for kids, interactivity is very important. I mean, I'm, I'm not driving them to purchase, of course. So I want them to spend time with my brand. I want, you know, time spent is very important to me. Engagement is the most important metric that I have. Um, for new moms, um, I don't think they have a lot of time to do that. So our objective with new moms is to get them somewhere where they can find more information, where they can talk to other new moms. But as I said, for kids, it's very important. And yet the bulk of the television advertising you do has no interactivity mechanism to it at all. You're still doing an awful lot with broadcast and cable TV. Is that going to become less valuable to you over time? Well, the benefit with TV is, um, I guess we talked about it a little bit, is the co-viewing. So um, having family viewing is very important to Mattel. Um, we like having parents, kids, all watching TV at the same time. So that has a tremendous amount of value to me. Um, what's happening with some of the online uh, content, original content, of course, we know the kids are, are leaving things like Nickelodeon and cartoons. Unfortunately, where they're going online are these subscription-based um, content where it's, you know, it's the Netflix and it's the Amazon. I don't have access to that audience, um, so that's a bit of a challenge, which, again, makes TV valuable to me. So let's shift gears a little bit to the whole issue of measurement, which also came up in the, the previous discussion. What is the currency that we should be using to buy and sell video across platforms? Do you want to start, Adam? Sure, I'm just, I'm still trying to grapple with Jeff calling me unsophisticated, <laughs> but. Um, just starting to grapple with you, I know you're grappling here. Um, I think, uh, look, I think the challenge with um, the currency question is there are a lot of different dimensions to it. Um, there's a question about how you value things and how you transact things. And those are two very different conversations. Um, I'll use the stock market as an analogy. Every company trades shares of stock on the stock market, um, and they all trade in denominations of shares. But every share is valued differently based on the relative value of that company, um, how many shares it has outstanding, the profit margins the company has, the growth rates, um, there are all sorts of different valuation metrics that different participants in the marketplace choose to use to value those shares. And in a lot of cases, people disagree on the relative value of those shares, looking at the exact same metrics um, because of the point of view that they have uh, in the marketplace. But at the end of the day, everyone trades shares. And that is what the marketplace is based on. So I would argue, very long-winded answer, I think the marketplace is always going to trade generally, and, and my perspective is coming at this from a quality content, TV-centric, long-form programming perspective. It isn't necessarily the same position I'd take if I was arguing this from a uh, content developer who was producing original content for the web that was short-form, that was only distributed um, in web environments. I believe that the, 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 the top level of content, kind of the long form traditional content will continue to be transacted based on an impression based model. Buyers and sellers will value those impressions on a whole host of evolving metrics. Today it's age and gender, typically in television. That's what most of the online video buys today are based on, age and gender guarantees. Um, but there's no reason that behavioral segmentation, um, viewability, uh, you know, length of view, completion rate, 
all sorts of other qualifiers that a buyer and seller may choose to look at to value that, that impression will come into play. So I think the marketplace stays based on impressions. The valuation metrics that everyone chooses to use will, will evolve and differ and, and, and you know, change over time. Gene, from a, the marketer's perspective, if we're going to boil it down to a basic demographic currency for simplicity's sake so that we have one marketplace, um, yet you're looking at it a different way, which is you're, you're looking to, I think, hold the seller accountable for results. Do you believe that demographics are the best way to go for digital video? Well, I think unfortunately for now, and I think this is still short term, we evaluate it based on where the budget is coming from. So, I mean, we're still in that model to a certain extent. So, if the money is coming from our television budgets, we're, we're talking demographics, I'm looking for scale. But if, if I'm buying video and it's coming from my digital budget, then I, then I use the different metrics. Um, I love completion rates, love them. Um, they tell me a tremendous amount. They tell me whether I'm, being, I'm, I'm targeting correctly, um, and it also gives me insight on my creative. So, um, I would love to have completion rates on TV. Jeff, uh, along those lines, I mean, is it fair to hold digital video to a different standard? You know, we can capture completion rates. We never had that luxury in the traditional television world. Yeah, I mean, listen, it, it's being sold on that standard. It's fair to hold it to that standard. So I think there, there, is, there is that element of it. Uh, does that mean that we should let linear off the hook and say, okay, it's just off that off currency. No, it, it shouldn't be. And I think it had there. There are many different studies that are being done to support. It's not just okay. It's not the old days of did I over deliver by 10, 15 percent on GRPs and wow, what a great job we did on television. I don't think anyone's looking at TV that way anymore. There are studies that are being done to back on the back end for brand attribution and, and recall. And there are other ways to measure it until again we get to that nirvana of having one type of ad serving mechanism out there. Uh, but no, we should not, yes, digital should be held to a slightly higher standard because it's being sold that way and because it can. Uh, we shouldn't, you know, one of the things I've, I found frustrating is again this, this move to really force fit a GRP into the digital world just because we want to move dollars away from television or, or traditional video into, into that world. When we all know that there's so many different nuances there, it's really just a directional look. So where are you and, and your team putting your energy when it comes to the measurement issue and developing a common currency that we can use? Okay, so this is where I'm going to say, hey, I'm the fill-in guy, <laughs> um, and I'm the emerging media, my role is emerging media, I don't want to answer questions that I'm not necessarily All in right. that wheelhouse, but I will say that, you know, again, we are looking at, uh, at there's not one answer. Everyone, every client or group of clients have different perspectives on what that, determination of what is successful, what is not, and because we have so many elements that we can look at, whether it's completion rates or whether it's uh, cost per acquisition or cost per lead if it's been more DR oriented, it, it's a very relative way of, of, of viewing the currency, and I think that's, that'll only continue. Adam, what about ABC? Where do you see it going in the near term? What's the most viable solution in the foreseeable future to get to where we have a common currency we can look at across platforms? Well, I mean, I, I think we're already doing it. So uh, last year, ABC launched uh, ABC Unified, which enables any advertiser to buy across all of our screens uh, with a single deal, single CPM, and a single demo guarantee. And uh, that's at the essence of how we go to market today. Um, we use Nielsen C3 ratings to measure and quantify uh, the audience that's delivered in traditional linear TV, time-shifted DVR and VOD through three days. Um, and we use Nielsen OCR currently um, as the tool to validate the audience delivery of the campaign in the online environments. Uh, at the end of the day, this whole discussion about GRPs and what's the currency, it's, it's kind of a red herring. Um, anyone who knows media math, knows that at the end of the day, a GRP is nothing more than a different way to express impressions. So all we're talking about here is what target is the buyer buying? Are they buying 18 to 49-year-old adults? Are they buying women 18 to 34? And 
How do I calculate the delivery? If I can calculate the delivery on the different platforms, I can add them up. And if I can add them up, I can figure out, based on the target universe, how many GRPs I delivered. So, you know, it's pretty straightforward stuff. We needed a measurement tool to be able to accomplish it online. That tool is still in its infancy. It is by no means perfect. There are lots of gaps and holes. For example, it doesn't measure anything on tablet or through apps. Um, that's a challenge. Uh, but I think, you know, to the point that technology and consumer behavior is moving more rapidly than the marketplace and kind of how we're reacting, that's the challenge we all have. We have to move faster. We have to come up with new solutions. But I also think we have to use common sense and adopt um, imperfect tools so that our business can move forward as, as opposed to always looking for the perfect because there never will be perfect again in this universe given how quickly technology changes. Sounds a little bit though, and I, I don't disagree with you. I think that's the unfortunate reality of what we have to face. But I, I go back to something that you just reminded me of a discussion that I had with Greg Stewart, the former head of the IAB. Now he runs the MMA. Um, many years ago when we were first discussing uh, research and, and, and tracking and definitions of impressions. And it, it just irked me that the industry was always about uh, consistency over accuracy. Because, as you said, there's never that perfect, we're never going to get to perfection. At the same time, perfection, uh, perfection um, accuracy leads to consistency. And I think one of, some of the challenges we've seen over the years um, in online measurement has been based on that, what I think was wrong direction early on, of going for consistency over being as accurate as possible at the time. And you know, I was just at the IAB Summit last week, and they're still arguing to a certain extent of the definition of an impression 17 years later. Um, and I think that's one of the ramifications of being too expedient versus thinking of the long-term ramifications. So if you're one vendor like ABC, and you can measure the impressions and the GRPs that you're delivering, that's one thing. But Gene, you're looking at a much broader palette of right. different vehicles. What about reach and frequency? How important I, is that to you? I, I'm all for universal GRP. I mean, I, I, and I'm not in lieu of, but in addition to. So for a marketer, when we launch, launch a brand, I need to know how many people I'm reaching across all of the platforms. So I need to have that unduplicated. That helps me project what my sales are going to be. So we all know that there aren't TV people anymore, there aren't online people anymore, there aren't mobile people anymore. I'm reaching, all, I'm reaching the same person just different ways. And I'm not talking about value here. I'm just talking about pure reach. So I do need to know, know that. That's very valuable to me. And where are you on that issue? Like, Adam, I know you're familiar with this. Well, it's less about where I am. I, it's more about where I think the next speaker, or the speaker coming up in a few panels is in his company is on uh, single source measurement. Um, you know, we need a way to look at the complete um, video consumption marketplace through a single data source. Um, that is the only way to, to provide unduplicated reach and frequency numbers, both at the programming and content level, which is critically important to, to my company um, and to every other content network, whether it's any of the Comcast networks or, 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 or News Corp or, or any of the other cable networks um, out there. Um, we need to know how many people are watching our shows, um, regardless of whether they're watching it on their television or on their iPad. Today, you know, the, the, one of the big topics at an event last week, uh, and that I think Jack could probably talk to if he's up here again, um, is the notion of overnight ratings. And, you know, historically in our business, TV shows were gauged on well, what, what was the overnight. Well, we've got a bunch of TV shows now on, a, on the ABC network where 30 or 40 percent of the viewership, sometimes even 50 percent, doesn't occur in the first 24 hours. Um, it occurs on a delayed basis, either because the viewer has DVR'd the program or because they're watching it through VOD. Um, and those ratings, you know, take a couple weeks to come out. Um, and those ratings don't even factor in any of the viewership that occurs on tablet and on the web. And when you factor that in, it's about another 10 percent bump. If, if we've got showrunners out in Burbank trying to figure out was a show successful, looking at the overnights doesn't help them anymore because they really need to understand the full complexity of viewership. 
And similarly for advertisers, they right. need to understand cross-platform how many people are being exposed to a campaign. And we're not going to be able to do that until we have a single source view. So Gene, along those lines, that was a nice segue to my next question. Um, the importance of timeliness. I mean, one of the reasons that advertisers have historically paid premiums for big broadcast TV networks and for high-rated shows is because of their ability to deliver simultaneous reach to large audiences. Mm -hmm. Now we're looking at delayed viewing. How, how important is that simultaneous reach to you? I mean, we're starting to see it already. So in our business, thankfully, consumers are usually very responsive. So when we went on TV, we would see a sales result, literally in the, in the first week. It, it was amazing. So we're seeing now that it's not so much the first week, it's sort of the second week. And now even a little bit, maybe it's even the third week. So we know that, we see it. We see it in our sales data that we're cuming that reach and it's taking longer and longer and longer. Um, unfortunately, our retailers don't have that kind of patience. And that's one of our challenges. I mean, they, they want to see that result. If they don't see that result immediately, they think that the product is a dog. And they've already written it off. So back to the universal GRP, I need to understand how do audiences cue now? So if they're watching delayed, if they're watching Modern Family online, but it's not until a week later, I need to know that. I need to plan for that. You know, and similarly, we have, we have clients such as Warner Brothers. I mean, when you have an opening weekend, you can't wait for it to cue in. You need that exposure within that two or three day period. So, so can I actually try to, I promised you I wasn't gonna do You wanna take this chair? No, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. I, I actually wanna try to bring it around, because we, I, I at least, and, and I think most of the discussion has been about TV and, and broadcast um, television, and, and I wanna recognize that this room is, and this panel is about a lot more than that. It's mm -hmm. about the video marketplace and how it's changing. Um, there are lots of, look, everything that, that that Jeff and Gene just talked about and, and what I talked about with regards to delayed viewing comes back to what was just talked about on the last panel with regards to dynamic ad insertion. So I'm gonna pull this together, don't worry. All right, I can um, hardly wait. Delayed viewing, the reason delayed viewing is a challenge for all of us is because we still operate from a TV business perspective in a unit-based economy world where we sell units that reside in a show and they get displayed whenever, whenever the viewer chooses to watch, if they've recorded on a DVR, or because up until now, VOD has to carry the same ad for 35 days, or at least until the network repitches the, the show, it's the same ad load pretty much in VOD no matter what. As viewership fragments out over time, that causes lots of problems. And it makes what already is a very inefficient model even more inefficient. So how do you solve that? You solve that with dynamic ad insertion. You solve that by making buys and the way that we transact video much more akin to how all of the web-only video publishers already transact video, which is on a dynamically ad-served basis. You don't sell units in shows. You don't sell units in programs. You sell impressions over time it against what an advertiser wants, and your ad server dynamically deliver the, delivers those to goal. That's ultimately what has to happen in the TV business. That's where the two sides of this come together. It's gonna take a long time. It's gonna take a lot longer in the linear world than it is necessarily in DOV, DVR and VOD. That's hopefully happening in the short term. But ultimately, I think the way all of our problems get solved and the way that the video e ecosystem becomes larger and more stable is that we all move to this real-time addressable environment where measurement's easier, where census level counts are, are practical, where you can manage inventory in real time against an advertiser's mm -hmm. goal, and where a publisher and, and a content owner can manage their inventory from a yield perspective. And, and it's gonna take a long time to get there. So that gets into some of the complexity that we're facing. Um, who, from your perspective, should be doing the buying of the the online video. Who is doing it? So, so I think the other big distinction that I think ha we haven't touched on yet, and I'll throw it out, is that I think the way that we talk about this is completely wrong. This is not about TV and digital. Um, in my mind, this is about long form and short form. 
Because ultimately, the device, the connectivity that a consumer uses, all the technology that we're all kind of wrapping ourselves up in is going to be irrelevant and invisible to the consumer. At the end of the day, the consumer wants to push a button and watch a show. They don't care what screen it is, how it's getting to them, what ad servers are being used, et cetera. They just want to watch a show. And um, to me, long form and short form does a much, much better job of defining what the long-term consumer experiences are going to be with video. There's going to be programming like Red Widow and Modern Family and The Voice and NFL football that you watch as you always have watched television, and those are entertainment experiences. And they're going to be passive, and they're going to be people sitting back on their couch watching big screens if they're in their living room, and uh, they're going to be watching on their phone if they're in transit, and they're going to be watching on their iPad if their spouse or kids are watching something on their TV and they want to watch something different. Um, short form programming, totally different animal in my mind. The experience the consumer has with it is different. They're watching it primarily on mobile devices um, or their, their computer. Um, it's going to be a lot harder for that content to flow onto the big screen in the living room. Um, and the ad units and the ad formats that exist in that programming will be vastly different, in my view, from what continues to remain in long form. Long form is going to be an intrusive model for a long, term, long time to come. There's a reality of how that business works in terms of the money that has to be generated to produce the content. There's a legacy business model. Um, it's not going to change overnight. But in the short form side, where a lot of the folks in the room play, there's not a legacy business. You guys can, you can create ad formats and content models and financial models from scratch. And you don't have to overcome the obstacles that the TV networks have to, to overcome. So who should they be bringing those pitches to I within think, the agency? I think that for the, for in, you know, I think in the short term, as much as I hate to say this, it's going to be two different groups. I, I would argue that the short form content experience, which can deliver things that the traditional long form video experience won't, should be handled by the digital buyers. I think any kind of long form traditional uh, TV model type of opportunity will ultimately flow to the TV buying groups. Well, uh, Jeff, on the agency side, do you agree? Is that how you want to see business done? No, I mean, I think there's, we have a, I'm not sure it's unique to us, but we have a group called OMB Stream. Jen Mickler is actually here somewhere. Um, that, uh, there you go. Uh, that is sort of the first point of contact to go to when there is that kind of opportunity, because they bridge the TV groups and the digital teams and know exactly how to send, who to send the, the particular uh, opportunity to. So I think having a group that's dedicated as that bridge right now is, is something that hopefully makes it easier for the seller, seller, selling community out there uh, to know that there is someone to go to within the organization without having to navigate the organization in totality to start off with. Um, I don't disagree there's, there's differences between long form and, and short form, but I still go back to the idea of the differentiation being much more about the frame of mind and the, and I especially, and I don't want to steal thunder from the next speaker, but anything in between the, the socialization in terms of the, 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 the impact factor of engagement in social media and what Bluefin and Nielsen have, are, are partnering to do um, and to literally give a little bit more, you, know, you said you, your retailers want to know now what it's gonna, what's going to happen. Um, I think the adding the factor of does this content socialize faster will actually be another metric that gets added to this equation. And so I think that is, is something that's going to evolve linear a little bit more than just on the, uh, on the short form side. We've got about 10 or 12 minutes left. Want to make sure that we're actually addressing your issues. So um, this seems like a good time to perhaps open it up to some questions from you. Um, anybody volunteer out there? Anybody have some questions they want to direct to the panel? We have a question over here. Good morning. <clears throat> David Shore from Placements Media here in Los Angeles. Not a long flight. Um, the main topic on my mind right now is <clears throat> how we uh, are potentially going to bring broadcast approaches, GRP, TRP, into the digital space. And it just doesn't feel that appropriate, uh, ultimately. Yes, it's a measure of 
impressions ultimately, but if you can't really quantify what a ratings point is, then how do you really uh, try to bring over those traditional approaches? Not sure. I, um, well, you can't. You can quantify what a GRP is online. Yeah. I, I, I guess Are you I'm saying you can't quantify it from a business results standpoint, or I'm not sure what the question was exactly. Well, first of all, I will admit I'm at a disadvantage because I do not buy traditional TV. Okay. okay. So I am only uh, analogizing. Uh, for me, I look at the inability to really measure what a complete, um, let's call it an audience point in an hour is. I would imagine that uh, traditionally on broadcast me mechanisms, you would be able to understand an approximate number of people watching a program and hence GRP. So I'm just suggesting that as you move broadly to behave, perhaps behavioral targeting and you're not looking at a, an advertisement on a single program, you begin to uh, make it a little more difficult to quantify um, a measurement that is based on a certain number of viewers watching a certain segment on a certain program. Just a different way of buying. Yeah, Hopefully yeah. that helps. Yeah. Well, I think what we're saying is that that's sort of where we're moving towards. The way I see it, because we're moving towards video plans and away from TV plans. So I, I see it as another network. So if I buy ABC Family and I buy Bravo, I would just add Yumi to that. I mean, to me, that's, that's another network. I get all the other net metrics, which is great, and that helps me to optimize. But I'm still seeing it all on an even playing field. Yeah, I mean, I think, and I'll, I'll throw a little bit of my own point of view in there. In one of the big challenges we've had, we talked a lot about, well, we can accept demographics as currency, even though we're going to look at other things in the mix to determine value. I think one of the things, you know, the whole industry has sort of accepted demographics for a very long time, at least as it relates to traditional media. Um, what we aren't recognizing is often demographics aren't a very good representation of who's our best prospect or who's in the market. Um, I worked on a large telecommunications company that used adults 18 to 49 to evaluate media plans. The reality is there's only about 2% of all telephone customers who are actually in the market for a new contract in any given month. In the digital world, we've got a much better indication of that, and, but that really starts with thinking differently all the way at the top of the food chain, thinking differently from the moment we start developing strategies as well as carrying it through to execution. But, but ultimately, what Absolutely agree. Ultimately, what you're talking about is just how you define the target, right? Yep. And, you know, there are a host of new solutions that are evolving um, that are going to support much more robust evaluation of segmentation, both for television and online. So Nielsen has uh, their NBI product, which ties purchase transaction level data from billions of credit card transactions. Um, to TV viewership and to online viewership. When we've looked at the data and compare a TV schedule that an advertiser bought against an 18 to 49 proxy, because that's who they thought their consumer was, but then looked at the category of purchase um, that they actually were targeting, shows perform radically different. You know, a show that might um, do a three rating on the age demo could do a 12 against the heavy purchase segment for for that particular advertiser. I don't disagree that, you know, that's where we have to be headed. We mm -hmm. have to be headed to defining new ways of identifying who the target is and quantifying how many impressions I deliver against that group. But I come back to, you're still going to be buying impressions and there's going to be a value for that impression that is driven by an individual marketer's view of their business relative to the performance that your exposure drives for them. But what it does also bring, and this is, I'm gonna end up throwing this to you in a second because I want your, your, your feedback on this. It, it requires a redefining of what the threshold levels are. Because if you say that the, on, that the online demographics and the behavioral targeting that we're overlaying on top of everything is gonna make an incredibly better impact factor than the traditional GRP would indicate, that might mean there's going to be a premium on that. And on that premium, they could end up with less GRPs that you have traditionally thought of as your threshold levels 
for a successful campaign. But that's, we've, we've had this, this issue with challenge with, with lots of discussions with clients where they're like, well, I get, well, I can target this, I can add this on a Tuesday at 3 p.m. It's awesome. Why aren't, why, why did I fall below 1,000 GRPs? And, and that, that is, is, is part of the educational, that's on us to educate clients as to why that makes sense. It's on the market to say, well, wait a minute, it's a greater impact, but at the end of the day, is it worth the premium that you're gonna end up having to pay? But it is one of the challenges, again, of having these, this one of the friction of having these two systems trying to work hand in hand. Is that? No, I, I would agree with that. I think that um, the theory is that the more targeted I become, the more efficient I would be at the end of the day, and therefore I don't have to keep increasing right. my budget. Um, I think that's true. I think it's a matter of, though, we keep talking about value. So I've seen metrics where they're 70% better than maybe another choice I might have, which is great, 70%. But it's priced at 150. Right. So is that valuable to me? I mean, that's what we have to talk about. I mean, mm -hmm. I would say no. I'll say no, too. <laughs> Uh, any other questions from the yeah, floor we that we can... Uh, We've got a couple more. Okay. Right here to your left. Ah. Yeah, right over here, guys. <laughs> Good morning. Yes, uh, Scott McLernan, Yumi. Thank you. Um, so uh, both a fascinating and a really frustrating discussion. Uh, right? So we can do this for As hours. As it has been with you for 17 years. Uh, yes. Okay. We, and Jeff, we've been fighting over uh, exactly. for an, another, hopefully another three or four God or five, willing. right? Um, so I guess, so my question is this, uh, and, and, and look, over here, we're just trying to do what we're told, right? So if you, if you want to measure it in GRPs, we have, we've got those tools. If you want to do it in, in impressions, we have those tools. You want to do it by demographic, you want to do it by audience. Um, so who should decide this, right? So uh, to your point, Adam, and this is something that we've been seeing now for the last year and a half, is that if, if you want to align with the broadcast strategy, well, that seems to be going over to the television side and pretty much around long form. Over here with short form, it's very much bought on the digital side. I'm just trying to understand how to align. And so I guess my question is, you guys aren't gonna solve it up here, but who should be solving this? Is this an IEB issue? Is this a separate task force that should happen? Should there be a call out? Um, I just, uh, you know, like I said, we're just trying to do what we're told. We'll go any way we, that, that is decided, but we're trying to decide who to align with. When you say align, what do you mean? Align what measure you're going to sell yeah, against? Yeah, exactly. You know, so who should be measuring this and who should be deciding how it gets measured? So again, I think there are different parts to the question, right? So there's what is the transactional element that people trade on? And whether you call it an impression or a GRP, it's the same thing. Ultimately, you're, you're selling a CPM-based model, and that's impressions, right? How you define the target, and how you're gonna kind of look at those impressions through a targeting lens is, is up to you, right? So at the end of the day, the way your ad server manages the inventory, the way you price and optimize your yield, the way that a buyer calculates their target impressions, it all comes down to the most granular element, which is the, the number of impressions that have been I think purchased. it's a bigger question is what right. I'm hearing, which is, you know, we've said the two issues are, you know, what's the right measurement and what's the right way to do business? And who's gonna resolve that issue you know, for the industry is I think what you're asking us. Um, because right now, we're leaving it to each agency to f try to find their own path there, and that's very frustrating for the selling community. You, you, there's no one size fits all. I'll throw it, you know, over to Jeff, and you know, what do you think, yeah, where do you only, think the solution is? The only answer I have on that is that I know, do know that the IAB, the 4As, and I believe the ANA have come together with a 3MS making measurement make sense initiative. So I believe that's the forum that they're trying to kind of get all this out on. Um, but again, in terms of which group will end up buying it or to align with, that's gonna be up to every agency to structure as they please with their clients, clearly. It's, or who measures it. I mean, that 3MS initiative is, is a standard. It's not a, just defining the standard right. for how to count, right? So now, who validates it? Is it Nielsen? Is it Comscore? Is it someone else? Right. I don't know. I, I would argue as a broadcast network that in the long form space, Nielsen measures television. They probably are in the best position to measure our content on whatever screens it flows. 
Yep. On the short form side, I think it's still open for debate. And I like competition, right. so let's say there'll be other companies Sorry. as well. I think well, it depends on who answers the question the fastest. There you go. Uh, I think we're just about out of yeah, time. We, Lee, so we wanted to get a couple of more uh, okay. questions in, but uh, I think we uh, we're running. We have a hundred. I mean, a minute and eleven seconds. If there's somebody that has a really short question and, yes, and it doesn't go to in Adam. Ten seconds and an answer in one minute. Can you hear me? Uh, uh, ten seconds. In typical Sorry. sales fashion, Jess Santoro of Indico here's a self-serving question. A lot of these questions that are out there, measurement, what it is, who does it, is answered by the ad server. Uh, we see more and more inventory being transacted in the fluidity model, whether it be ABC or the networks. Um, and we have this bifurcated way of uh, buying and selling, digital and traditional. But regardless, still 50% of the market is not buy side ad served. When can we see more inventory be buy side ad served to start addressing the real answers of all these questions? Can one of you answer that and, uh, fairly quickly? Well, I, I, I mean, I'll just say I don't believe that ad servers are necessarily the point at which measurement will occur for um, audience-based buys. Ad servers provide a census level count of two plus impressions. Um, Nielsen and Comscore and other services that provide audience views into actual people consuming media, which ad servers do not. They track the number of browsers and machines that have gotten exposed to content, um, are the most critical component for measuring audiences. I would guess that both my client, client counterpart and my agency counterpart will agree with me on that. So an ad server is one small piece of a larger pie that, that is going to solve the problem of measurement. Okay. Well, with that, I guess we'll wrap it up. I, um, I think what you'd hear here, if you, uh, if you summarize what everybody has to say, we do need to get aligned as an industry on the measurement issues, accept what's practical in the near term so that we can just get moving on this and get the appropriate level of investment into online video and realize the great potential that it offers beyond traditional video. Um, and the complexity question, I don't think we've really answered that. It's going to continue to be a very big challenge for sellers to navigate through the agency environment, um, but we're all certainly conscious of the need to make it simpler, get the friction out, and, and start making things happen. Lee Doyle, thank you. Adam Gerber, Jeff Min